All right, let's go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Options with Doug, streaming live on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Bookmap Discord and the Bookmap YouTube channel at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Before I get started, I need to go through the disclosures. General disclosure, all Bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for are for informational purposes only, educational purposes only, and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and options involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Here's my contact information. The best way to get in touch with me is through Discord. My name on Discord is Doug P. Also in Bookmap Discord, there's an options dash Doug chat channel. That's a great place to post questions, comments, and content related to the topics of my presentation and the topics of the channel that I'll go through in just a moment. I'm also on X. My name there is at Doug Plass. Here are the key tenets to my approach for trading. This is the basis of my approach to trading. I believe that options trades and market maker hedging activity are key drivers of price of many stocks and futures. And for the SP500, SPX is the underlying index, SPY is the ETF version of that index, and the ES futures contra contract is a derivative of SPX. And when traders buy and sell puts and calls in SPX and SPY, market makers take the opposite side of those trades and they hedge their delta exposure with ES futures. And for the NASDAQ 100, NDX is the underlying index. QQQ is the much more liquid ETF version of that index. And in the NQ futures contract is a derivative of NDX. And when traders buy and sell puts and calls in NDX and QQQ, market makers take the opposite side of those trades and they hedge their delta exposure with NQ futures. The focus of my presentation today and the focus of the options dash jug chat channel is options order flow, the impact of options markets on stocks and futures, and the influence of market maker hedging flow on price action. I have a two-step process for trading and the first is planning and I use positional analysis. I look at how traders and market makers are positioned at the options market and how those positions change from day to day to develop a thesis regarding the expected trading range and volatility for the day, as well as the directional bias. And the second step in my process is execution. I look at real-time order flow and book map and real-time market maker hedging flow and spot gamma hero to confirm my thesis and for setups. And when I talk about setups today, I will be focusing on an underlying asset. And setups in that asset can be taken with futures contracts, shares of stock, or options, depending on the asset as well as the way you like to trade. Questions and comments are welcome. And I will be watching both the options dash jug chat channel as well as the chat and YouTube uh, for your questions and comments. Please feel free to post. I'll do my best to answer your questions. Here's my agenda for today, Friday, August 16th. First of all, I want to go over news items, economic data, and events to wrap up the week. Then I'll go through my positional analysis. Then I'll review some setups from earlier today, and then I'll take a look at the live market. And when I get to the live market, if anyone has any stocks they want me to take a look at, please let me know and I'll be glad to do that. All right, let's get started with news items, economic data, and events to wrap up the week. First of all, today, economic data came out, 8.30 a.m. housing starts. That was less than expected, also less than the previous number. 10 a.m. Michigan consumer sentiment came out, and that was greater than expected and greater than the previous number. And note today is also the monthly options expiration. So let's take a look at that. And let me pause just a moment to uh, check on YouTube again. Give me just a moment.
All right, it looks like YouTube, uh, as far as I can tell, is still not streaming. I'm not seeing it on my uh, second computer. So sorry about that. Not sure what the problem is. Is anyone over on Discord <clears throat> maybe can check? Hold on just a second. Sorry about this. All right, I'm going to have to move on. All right, uh, Hector says not working on on YouTube. Gray says not able to see stream as well. I don't know what the problem is, so sorry about that. I am recording this session, so what we can post that, uh, post it on YouTube later. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on to options exploration today. And if you recall earlier in the week, we did take a look at this. So this is the Options Expiration Concentration Chart for the SP500, NASDAQ, and Russell 2000 showing market maker delta notional on the vertical axis and expiration date on the horizontal axis. So over on the left here, this is the expiration today, the August options expiration. The call bars, the call bar that is showing let's, call bar showing call delta notional or positive delta notional, blue bar showing put delta notional or negative delta notional. When we looked at this earlier in the week, the options expiration was about evenly distributed between puts and calls and with the rally the last couple of days it has now become a call-dominated options expiration. You can see the orange bar much, much larger than the blue bar. So this August options expiration turning into a call-dominated expiration. And sometimes as those calls that are supporting the market, positive, uh, the market maker's position on the gamma curve has shifted to positive. Index is trading above volatility triggers. Those calls now supporting the market expire, and that can release some volatility and perhaps some weakness into next week. So options expiration now today turning into a call-dominated options expiration. All right, so that is the news items and events for the, this uh, week. Now let's move on to positional analysis. I'm going to start by taking a look at the S&P 500. This is the ES Futures and book map. Before I take a closer look at this chart, I want to take a look at a higher time frame. I'm going to go to the SPX and under the underlying index. Rally began last year. Let's zoom in to price action for this year. Rally began last year. Correction began April 1st. Rally resumed April 19th, option, the Monday after the April options expiration. Moving on to the current time frame, more, more recent data. This next correction began on July 17th. That was VIX expiration three days before the July 19th options expiration. All right, let's now go to a one hour chart sticking with SPX. So that was a one day chart. Now let's go to a one hour chart.
This is the July 17th VIX expiration on a Wednesday when the current correction began. SPX made a low Monday last week after the big drop over the weekend. At 51.19, I did talk about this Monday last week. I think, unfortunately, due to technical difficulties, that session was not recorded. That was at the very bottom of the gamma curve. Since then, SPX has continued to rally. This is the jobless claims. Jobless claims rally from last week came in a little bit better than expected. And now the SPX continues to move higher. So the, so the SPX from the low to the current high has rallied about 440 points from 51.19 up to around 55.60. So big rally continues. All right, let's take a look at the levels on this chart. First of all, the dash purple lines are showing the lower and upper weekly expected move. SPX is trading well above the upper weekly expected move. And SPX did break above that upper weekly expected move on Wednesday this week. Excuse me. So SPX again trading above, well above the upper weekly expected move for the week. The dashed blue lines are showing the lower and upper daily expected move. Both of these are based on the absence market. The weekly expected moves are based on the closing price for SPX from last Friday. And then the daily expected moves are based on the closing price for SPX yesterday. So SPX is trading within the daily expected move for today but again well above the upper weekly expected move and note I do post those both those levels in discord every day the evening before all right the dark red lines on this chart are showing spot gamma levels these are provided to spot gamma subscribers they're available on a variety of trading platforms. Again, this is Thinkorswim, a 30-day, one-hour chart. These levels are based on gamma-weighted open interest. I'm going to point out the key daily levels. First of all, the put walls at 5,300. That's a strike with the largest net negative gamma. They can be expected to act as support. The next level up is the volatility trigger at 5,495. That is spot, spot gamma's proprietary gamma and volatility flip level. Below that level, market makers' position on the gamma curve is negative. In a negative gamma environment, market makers have to trade with price to hedge their delta exposure, and that tends to enhance or increase volatility. When market makers are trading down, when prices are moving down, they're selling and they're buying as price moves up. That tends to increased volatility making for larger moves, wider trading ranges. On the other hand, on the other hand, above that level, like SPX is trading now, market makers position on the gamma curve is positive. In a positive gamma environment, market makers have to trade against price to hedge their delta exposure, and that tends to decrease or uh, diminish volatility when market makers are trading against price. And note that since this move lower, gamma notional has typically been negative and just switched to firmly positive today. Slightly positive for SPX yesterday. And gamma notional has been shifting higher, generally higher, for the last three days now in firmly positive ter territory. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. All right, the next level up is the absolute gamma strike at 55.50. That was resistance earlier today. We'll take a closer look at that in just a minute. That was resistance earlier today. 
So that's the strike with largest absolute positive and negative gamma. That level did shift up from yesterday. Volatility trigger also shifted higher. And then finally, the call wall at 5600, that's a strike with largest net positive gamma that can be expected to act as resistance. And that level did also shift higher. So a bullish hat trick for SPX. And the same for SPY, the volatility trigger, call wall, and absolute gamma strike all shifted higher. So bullish hat tricks for SPX and SPY. And we'll see in just a minute that the S&P 500 has traded up to the 555 call wall for SPY, but the according to SBX, uh, the SBX still has room to run up to the 5600 call wall. All right, let's wrap up our view of SBX. See, there's the there's the SPY 555 call wall. And that level did act as resistance almost to the tick. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. All right, so let's wrap up our view of SPX with a one minute chart. I've got a little over two days worth of data here because I want to see the levels down below. So you can see SPX is trading above the 5495 volatility trigger and positive gamma environment. Here are the two key levels for today. 5550, that is the absolute gamma strike. You can see that's an L1 over there, large gamma one. That's the absolute gamma strike acting as resistance earlier today. And then SPX rallied again, traded up above 50, 5560. And that is a combo four level combining SPX and SPY gamma weighted open interest into one level. So that level currently acting as resistance. SPX trading now down below that level. All right, so that is the SPX from a one day to a one hour to a one minute chart. Key levels in play again, 5550, 50, 5560. All right, let's take a look at bookmap now. So in bookmap, actually, let's take a look at the SPY chart, SPY one minute chart. So we can see the levels in play for SPY. Here's the SPY 550 absolute gamma strike around that level, acting as support before the cash open. Regular trading hours shown in the dark shaded portion to the right. Here's the 552 volatility trigger acting as support earlier today. And then note the call wall, the 555 call wall acted as resistance, actually two ticks higher. And that's aligned pretty closely with the SPX 5560 level. All right, so this is book map now. ES futures in book map. Again, I believe that ES is a derivative of SPX. So I take a look at the, I focus on the SPX and SPY levels for ES. There's that SPY 550 absolute gamma strike. And the S&P 500 reversed higher just before 9 a.m., uh, just quite right above that level. Now SPX traded up to the 5560 level that was resistance from 2 to 3 a.m. well before the pre uh, that was in the pre-market well before the cash open. Then SPX again found support before the cash open right around 55.50. Traded almost up to the 55.50. Absolute gamma strike resistance level. Found support at the SPY 552 volatility trigger. And then traded up to the 555 call wall. Found resistance there. Then resistance at the 55.60 combo four level. 
All right, so those are the key levels in play. Again, I have my own cloud notes, so I can show those SPX and SPY levels. For the S&P 500, note there is a difference in price between ES and SPX. And today it is somewhere between 23 and 24. I'm using 23 right now. It may be closer to 24 now. It does vary a little bit during the day. I set it at 23 and uh, have just left it at 23. So again, there's a difference in, in price between ESP, ES and SPX that is a little bit smaller as the next rollover approaches, the next expiration for the futures contract. And I do post those index relationships that I'm using every day in Discord. All right, so the key levels, very important today for the SP500. And again, shifts in levels for the SPX and SPY, bullish hat tricks for both, and that is bullish. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to the NASDAQ now. Similar pattern. Let's take a look at the, this is the NQ Futures and Book Map. And before I take a closer look at this chart, I do want to take a look at the underlying index charts. Let's take a look at QQQ. QQQ, this is a one minute chart, dark shaded portion showing regular trading hours for today. Before the cash open this 471.65 level, that's a combo three level, around that level acting as support. And the other level in play for today is the 475 large gamma three level. So the levels as far as QQQ go, not clearly, not as clear uh, as the SP 500 today. All right, so that's QQQ. And now let's take a look at NDX, which is a little bit different story. Two key levels in play for NDX today. The 19,500. That is a large gamma three level. Just above that, the 510 level, that's a combo level, combining QQQ and NDX gamma weighted open interest into one level, shown here in terms of a, an NDX price. Note NDX trading well above its volatility trigger. Again, there's the 19,500 level acting as resistance earlier today. And now the 19,510 combo level looks like that is acting as support. All right, so QQQ levels, not, not so much in play, but the these two NDX levels, you can't see the uh, 510 level, that's the, because the QQQ 475 level label is right on tar top of that. So there's that level acting as resistance after the uh, after the cash open. And note uh, NASDAQ has not quite made it up to its 3 a.m. high at QQQ 477. So again, just I, I do have my own cloud notes in, in book maps so I can show these QQQ and NDX levels. And we'll take a look at setups in just a few minutes. All right, shifts in levels for NASDAQ. For NDX, put wall shifted higher. Put wall is back above the call wall, which does happen occasionally in NDX because of the lack of liquidity. So the put wall moved up to 20,150, well above, not in play, well above everything. Absolute gamma strike also shifted higher. And then for QQQ, the volatility trigger and absolute gamma strike both shifted higher. 
And we'll, again, we'll take a look at setups in a few minutes. Let's wrap up our positional analysis by taking a look at Gamma Notional. This is market maker's position on the Gamma Curve at the beginning of the day. Note now all these numbers are positive for the first time in a couple of weeks. Again, all numbers are positive. This is Gamma Notional market maker's position on the Gamma Curve at the beginning of the day for the SP500 and the NASDAQ. In a positive gamma environment, spot gamma assumes that traders are short calls, market makers are long calls, hence the positive gamma. They have to trade against price to hedge their delta exposure. Let's just take a quick look at the Vanna model. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this just to see how this works. I'm going <clears> to <throat> quickly point out what this chart is showing is market makers delta notional on the vertical axis, price for SBX on the horizontal axis. There are two curves on this chart. The light gray curve shows how market makers delta notional may change with um, changes in price only. And the purple curve adds implied volatility to the equation. This shows how market makers delta notional may change with changes in price and applied volatility. And note the difference in the gray curve and the purple curve. The purple curve, again, the one we want to take a look at. As price drops, applied volatility increases. Market makers delta notional will increase more than just by uh, decrease in price only. And it works also the other way, as price increases, implied volatility decreases, market makers delta notional will change less than shown by price only. All right, the thing that I wanted to point out, this is the Vanna model for today. I've been looking at this for the last couple of weeks as gamma notional ha uh, has been very negative. So let's just see how this curve has changed as Gamma Notional has shifted to positive. So this is yesterday. This is the day before. And remember, I mentioned the last three days, Gamma Notional has shifted from negative, slightly negative on Wednesday. And for SPX to positive yesterday. So that's the shift to yesterday. Notice how this right side of this curve is starting to shift up. This is typical of a positive gamma environment. And then today. All right, so as price continues to move higher, gamma notional shifts to more positive. In that case, we're looking for market makers to be trading against price to hedge their delta exposure. So as price is increasing, their delta exposure is increasing. They have to sell futures. And then as price drops, their delta notional is, is dropping and they can buy futures. All right, so that's all I wanted to say about, about Vanna notional. All right, let's move on. Actually, I want to move on now. So uh, my thesis for today, there were actually two. First of all, just based on the shifts in levels, my thesis directional bias for today was bullish. Again, based on the, the shifts higher in levels, remember the bullish hat tricks for SPX and SPY. And number two thesis, and this may play out next week, we'll, uh, we'll uh, check on that on Monday, is the call dominated options expiration, looking for some call gamma unwind in stocks. So traders have been buying calls in stocks. More about this in just a minute. Traders buying calls in stocks. And market makers sell the calls. So they have to buy stock to hedge their delta exposure. Traders are typically buying calls that expire today on Friday. As those calls start to lose value, if price drops, Ex expiration approaches, those calls start to lose value. That is called charm. 
their delta decreases. That's charm. Market makers delta notional will drop and they can sell their long stock edges. So that may play out. I'm thinking play out today or maybe early next week, looking for potentially some weakness in the market. So that is the that is the alternate thesis. All right, so let's move on now. Let's move on. Everything that we've looked at so far, other than bookmap, is based on static data. Spot Gamma takes open interest data that's updated. updated once a day sometime during the night, apply their own al algorithms. They come up with the levels that we've been looking at, the gamma notional. Now let's move on to real-time data, move on to execution. And as always, I'm going to start with the S&P 500 and taking a look at what options traders have been doing today. All right, so now we're moving on to execution, moving on to real-time data. What this chart this chart is the HERO chart, Hedging Impact Real-Time Options, H-I-R-O, H-I-R-O. This is provided to Spot Gamma subscribers. What this chart is showing is options trades in market maker hedging activity in real time for a combined signal of SPX, SPY, XSP, and ES futures. So this is the index signal index hero signal for the S&P 500. There are two lines on this chart. The white line is price for SPX, and the purple line is the hero signal. A falling hero signal indicates traders are taking negative delta options positions. They are buying puts and or selling calls. A rising hero signal indicates traders are taking positive delta positions. They are they're buying calls and or selling puts. Note the reversal there right around 1050. And also the reversal right around 1020. We'll take a closer look at that in just a minute. So again, that is the index signal for the SP 500. There's another signal that we can take a look at. For the S&P 500, this is the S&P equity signal. What this chart is showing is a combined signal of options trades and market maker hedging activity for all 500 stocks in the S&P 500 index. So this is the equity signal. Both signals are providing uh, both signals working well today at various times during the day. So I really, when I'm trading the S&P 500, I keep my eye on both of these signals. All right, so let's open up full screen now. Since I'm looking at the signal, I'm going to start with it. This signal was pretty flat for about uh, the first half hour. Then traders started taking positive delta positions. And note this flow alert. This signals significant options activity. And it can often, especially for the S&P 500, be a mean reversion signal. And it certainly did its job here, indicating a potential reversal in the hero signal and a potential reversal in price. So that is the hero signal for the S&P equities. Now let's shift over to the S&P 500, the index signal. And for the first 50 minutes from 9.30 to 10.20, this signal was a little bit easier to interpret, more bullish, more trending up. Traders taking positive delta positions and then it also reversed lower at 1020. And price move lower as traders started taking negative delta options positions. And note in this case, the flow alert came in on the index signal. Again, in this case, indicating a potential reversal. 
And just about five minutes later, the hero signal started, started to shift higher. So today it really paid to pay attention to both of these signals. All right, let's go take a look at bookmap now. Go back to the SP 500. All right, here's the cash open. Right here, you can see the volume coming in at the cash open. The volume dots in, in book map are showing market buy minus sell. Green volume dots indicate more buyers than sellers. Magenta dots indicate more sellers than buyers. There's that reversal just above 550, right before 9 a.m. Sellers are exhausted. Aggressive buyers come in, and they come in in higher volume right around the cash open. You can see the volume here as well. That's also shown by the rising cumulative volume delta in the subchart. And then as some aggressive sellers start to come in, you can see cumulative volume delta starts to flatten out before, right before price peaks, just below the 55.50 level. And then cumulative volume delta starts to drop. Aggressive sellers start to come in. Price moves lower. That turns out just to be a, a pullback. S&P 500 found, find support at the SPY 552 volatility trigger. That's also the zero gamma level. Aggressive buyers start to come in again and price moves up to the, all the way to the 555 call wall. So a rally from 552 all the way up to the 555 call wall. So about a 30 point rally in ES. And remember, let's go back to the hero signal. For the equity signal, there was a flow alert indicating the potential reversal right around 1020. And then the flow alert came in for the index signal just before, uh, right around 10, between 1045 and 1050 indicating the potential reversal, in this case, in the index signal. All right, I'm going to shift to puts and calls just to get a little bit more clarity. So in the case of the index signal, again, looking for, sorry about that, auto zoom, still, a, still an issue. So looking for more clarity in the index signal. This initial move higher was driven by call buyers. That's shown by the orange line. Traders buying calls. Market makers take the opposite side of those trades, hedging their delta exposure with ES futures. They were buying puts also. That's shown by the falling blue line. And then just right after 10.20, they start selling calls and buying puts. Price reverses lower. Then right around 1050. Orange line, blue line, shift higher. Price moves higher. So that's the index signal. Let's go take a look at puts and calls in the, in the equity signal. And not quite as clear. All right, let's move on now to the NASDAQ. I'm going to shift back to total signal. And just like the S&P 500, there are two signals that we can take a look at for NASDAQ. First of all, this is the index signal showing options, trades, market maker hedging activity for a combined signal of NDX and QQQ.
And then there's also the MAG7 signal. What this signal is showing is options trades and market maker hedging activity for the stocks known as the Magnificent Seven, Apple, Amazon, Google, Meta, Microsoft, Nvidia, Tesla. These stocks, most part, have very large market cap, very heavily weighted in the NASDAQ, also the S&P 500, and can, to, can tend to move, especially the NASDAQ. All right, so that's the MAG7 signal. Let's go back to the NASDAQ signal, the index signal. We'll start it with that. Let's go for full screen. Zoom in on the morning. Becomes a little bit more clear. Strong correlation with the initial move up. Up until about, whoops, sorry, wrong tool. Up until about 1020. Traders taking positive delta positions. Then the signal reverses lower. Price follows. Note here, if you are watching closely, this does provide a little bit of a lead. Here, price made about an equal high. And this price is shown for NDX. Remember that. 500 level just above. So as price was making about an equal high, actually slightly higher, right up to the 500 level, the hero signal made a lower high, acting as a leading indicator for this price, price uh, the move lower. Hero signal continues to make a series of lower highs. And again, so overall, pretty strong correlation in the NASDAQ index signal with price. Let's take a look at what price is doing now. Let's take a look in the MAG7 signal. So pretty similar to the equity signal, which can often uh, appear to be the MAG7 plus 493. Remember the choppy action in Hero, sharp move higher, drop lower, shift over to the MAG7 signal, very similar. <laughs> I left those errors in place. And then price started to move higher. As the MAG7 signal started to move higher. Back to the equities, very similar pattern. Again, equities can often be the MAG7 plus 493. All right, let's go to book map, take a look at NASDAQ. So zoomed out like this, we can see several things in the subchart here. First of all, the light blue line is showing iceberg orders. This is what large traders use to hide their size. A falling blue line indicates traders are selling with iceberg orders. And that is, in this case, obviously in the opposite direction of price. The yellow line is showing stop orders. That is almost always in the direction of price. Today it is not. So it looks like there are more sell stop orders that's shown over here. Iceberg orders, negative for the day. Stop orders, negative for the day. Both shown on the, shown on the subchart. So really options trades as well as aggressive buyers driving price today. That's shown by the volume dots. Also, cumulative volume delta. And you can see cumulative volume delta finally really starting to perk up. Right around 1130, a little bit before 1130. 
after that deep pullback. All right, let's take a look at the cash open 930. Today, uh, for me, the NASDAQ was not nearly as clear as the S&P 500 in terms of levels, in terms of order flow and hedging flow. So they cash open. NASDAQ made a series of higher lows. Aggressive buyers finally start to come in. You can see the rising cumulative volume delta flattens out pretty quickly. Resistance at the 19,500 level, which now is acting as support. 19,000, 5,000 resistance. Now support. As options trades and aggressive buyers move NASDAQ higher. All right, let's go back to Hero. And let's shift to the index signal, shift to puts and calls. And this is actually appears to be, this is probably NDX. Pretty typical of an options expiration. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's NDX. Some sort of uh, rebalance, algo activity in NDX. And that begins right around 1130. So that is distorting the index signal, the NASDAQ index signal after 1130. But it looks like it did help to drive NASDAQ higher. And looks like they that went on for about two hours, 1130 to 130, then flattened out. Let's shift over to MAG7. So currently now, in the MAG7 stocks, traders are selling calls and buying puts. And if that continues, I'd be looking for NASDAQ to move lower. All right, let's move on. Let's take a look at some stocks. I've been going pretty slowly today. I've got uh, several stocks to take a look at. I'll, I'll go on since there was a delay due to the YouTube issue this morning. So I'll, I'll keep going past 2.30 today. All right, so here's Google. Puts and calls separated. Call buyers driving price starting just uh, right around or before 10 a.m. And that is when Google breached its call wall. The, the 162.50 call wall there. So traders were selling puts. That's shown by the rising blue line. And then they started buying calls again right at that breach. As uh, right, it looks like right before the QQQ breached the call wall. And note they shut it down. Options traders stopped buying calls. Stopped selling puts. And price consolidated move lower. Let's go take a look at Google. Go to book mount. Go to Google. One sixty two fifty. Remember the some consolidation around that level, then the breach as traders were taking positive delta positions. And then they took the foot off the gas right around 1045, right at the 165 level. That was the liquidity target. Note the limit sell orders in the order book right at 165. Looks like those levers, uh, those orders were consumed. Price move lower. Let's darken up the heat map just a little bit. Often there's a lot of algo activity, arbitration around Google. Not so much today. 
All right, so that's Google. Put sellers, call buyers in the morning. Price moves up to the 165 target. And then now options traders took their foot off the gas and Google consolidating. One way to trade that, trade that if you want to trade that reversal in a lot of other stocks today, is just to sell a call spread up at that level, buy a put spread, just saying price. I don't think price will make it back above 165. And as long as it doesn't, I make profit. All right, next stock, Meta. Bearish morning in Meta today. No typical of a stock on an expiration day. Large opening print kind of obscures the volume dots for the rest of the day. Let's see what options traders are doing. Let's go to Meta. Note in Meta just about five minutes after the cash open. Well, immediately after the cash open, traders were selling calls. Shown by the falling orange line. A couple of flow alerts there. Flow alert gets your attention. There are actually three. In the first 10 minutes, there were three flow alerts. See those alerts. See the falling orange line. Then just uh, around 9.35. Whoops, sorry, wrong tool. Falling orange line. Traders selling calls, start buying puts. Price moves lower. Looking for a short. Call sellers finally take the foot off the gas. Right around 11.30. Start buying a few calls. At this, at this point, the put line is flattened out, not doing much. So in this case, after, after really about 10 a.m., it's mainly... Call sellers, call buyers, driving price and meta. Start buying calls. Price moves back up to right around 5.30. Now the call traders have also taken their foot off the gas and meta's consolidating. All right, so there's meta. Uh, Steven says the perspective of the spot gamut charts are so interesting. I agree. I think this is um, this is fascinating for me that the options market can be such a key driver of price. And Stephen, you're very welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for your thanks for your support. All right, so that's Meta. Go back to Bookmap Meta. Call sellers, call buyers, take the foot off the gas. Consume those orders at 5.30. Price can't make it above 5.30. 5.30 if you wanted uh, to trade a very short-term spread. Or up here would have been, uh, would have been better to uh, trade a little bit higher up. All right, so that's Meta. Let's take a look at Microsoft. For Microsoft, 420 is the key gamma strike. 417 is the hedge wall. And I did draw that in here. Do it how it acted as support. Just tone down the volume dots just a little bit. So early in the morning, sorry. Price broke below VWAP, shown by the light blue line. Broke below the 420 key gamma strike. Found support at the 417.50 hedge wall. Now trying to make it back up to 420. Let's see what options traders have been doing.
So Microsoft, it's call traders that are really driving price today. Note the blue line, the put line is pretty flat. It's been flat all day. So initially in the morning, traders are selling calls. Flow alert comes in right around 940. You see the alert. You see the falling orange line looking for a short. And if you're waiting on the alert, here's your entry point at the break below the 420 key gamma strike with a target of the 417.50 hedge wall. Note that options traders continued to sell calls up until about 11.20 and the support at the 417.50 hedge wall did hold even though traders continued to sell calls and as the call sellers took their foot off the gas Microsoft began to reverse higher right around 11.20 right there alright so that's Microsoft Next stock I want to take a look at is NVIDIA. Mainly call buyers and call sellers driving price in NVIDIA. NVIDIA the 125 key gamma strike definitely in play for today. From the open traders are buying calls. When traders buy calls, market makers sell the calls. They have to buy stock to hedge their delta exposure. Looks like NVIDIA made a double top at the 125 key gamma strike. Traders started selling calls. Price reverses lower. In this case, this flow alert comes in. Good signal for pretend, uh, pending reversal. Right after that, the call sellers take the foot off the gas. Start buying calls, price moves higher. Let's go take a look at Bookmap. Go to NVIDIA. There's that double top at the 125 key gamma strike. Again, in a very uh, an area of very high liquidity. There were some limit or sell limiters in the order book before the cash open. This is the 930 cash open. More limit sell orders come in. Note the larger volume dots at that level. Some of those orders were consumed. Then they come in again right after that event. Start selling again as traders start selling calls. Price moves lower. Take the foot off the gas. Start buying calls. Price trying to make its way back up to the 125 key gamma strike. That high liquidity in the order book can often act as a magnet for price. So as NVIDIA was making a series of higher lows here, I'm definitely looking at this 125 level, previous high, high liquidity as the target. Let's go back to Hero. So traders continue to continue to buy calls. A little brief pause. Now they're buying calls again. Starting somewhere between 2 and 215, 210. Put line rising slightly also, but it looks like call buyers and sellers definitely in charge of price for NVIDIA today. Let's go to book map. All right, the last stock that I wanted to take a look at is Tesla. Very bullish morning in Tesla. Didn't last long. Let's go take a look at Hero. So in Tesla, 220 is the call wall, the key gamma strike. De that 220 level definitely did its job as the call wall. And 
And note this is absorption when price doesn't quite meet that level. Those limit sell orders in the order book remain in place. And note how cumulative volume delta starts to drop. I keep picking the wrong tool today, sorry. The wrong pen tool. Cumulative volume delta starts to drop right around 1015 as price reverses lower and more aggressive sellers start to come in. Darken up those um, enlarge the volume dots a little bit. All right, so let's go take a look at Hero and see what options traders were doing in Tesla. All right, so in this case for Tesla, puts and calls mostly moving in sync today. Traders were buying calls and selling puts up until the price got close to the 220 call wall key gamma strike. Put line levels off. Call line makes lower high. Then start moving the same direction again down. Flow alert comes in, in this case indicating pending uh, change in hedging flow, in this case from negative to neutral, and then finally slightly uh, bullish. Also a flow alert comes in around 940. Again, you see a flow alert 10 minutes after the cash open. See the rising orange and blue line looking for an entry point, pullback entry point for long. So again, puts and calls working pretty much in the same direction most of the day. Driving price up, then down, then up again. Now looks like down, maybe flattening out now. Let's go back to book map. There's that sharp move higher. First pullback entry right after the cash open. Other pullback entries. Up to 220. Let's take a look at the market pulse price change indicator to see how well the market pulse price change lines up with those pullbacks. It'll take just a minute for this to, uh, to load. All right, before I wrap it up, does anyone have any questions or any stocks they want me to take a look at? All right, so it looks like this pullback was the first pullback that was deep enough to have a confirmation on the market pulse price change indicator. I like to look at, for an uptrend, I look at the dark red areas as the extremes confirming a deeper pullback for a, a long entry. Next pullback. And by the time this pullback comes along, Tesla's pretty close to the target. This was the level and liquidity price target at 220. All right, last call, stocks, questions. Let's go back and take a look at the S&P 500. So now it looks like the S&P 500 is stuck between the 55.50 and 55.60 level. Check NASDAQ.
NASDAQ also consolidating now between QQQ 475 and 476. Let's take a look at one other thing I wanted to take a look at today. Let me go right here. What this chart is showing is the volatility skew for SPX. So it's showing implied volatility. This is from Spot Gamma. This is available to Spot Gamma subscribers. Showing implied volatility on the vertical axis, strike price on the horizontal axis. This is typical for the S&P 500. Showing that put, this is the current price, showing put IV is highly elevated. This dark shaded area showing the 10th to the 90th percentile for the last 90 days. Note that SPX volatility skew is in the right in the middle. Current volatility skew shown by that dark area. There's much more information about this on the Spot Gamma website. But anyway, this is showing typical for an index, very heavily weighted put skew indicating puts are more expensive. Let's say you take an equal out of the money puts and calls. The puts are price of the puts, implied volatility of puts, much more highly elevated compared to the calls. And that can give you an advantage to set up something like like this trade here. This is a this is a risk reversal for the SP 500. Shown buying a put spread, pretty much an at the money put spread and selling an out of the money call spread at an equal price. This was actually this is just a I'm showing this as a simulated trade. But it looks like this would have worked for about a 10 cent credit. So if price moves up, there's no risk in the trade until the price reaches the short call strike, which is at 56.70. And that is above the current call wall. All right, so this is a risk reversal showing what you can do if your thesis for early next week is bearish, again, based on the call dominated options expiration. Also in the Spot Gamma AM Founders note, there was a note about the um, a note about stati statistics around the VIX expiration in relation to the options expiration. So this put skew gives you a, a, quite an advantage for a a trade like this, this risk reversal. And if price does move down, it can easily be adjusted so there's no risk in the trade. And if price does, and I'll uh, keep up with this uh, next week. All right. Jerry asks, is there stream from today not on YouTube? Uh, that is correct. I don't, I don't have any idea why. I turned on OBS Studio. And for some reason, it is not streaming to YouTube. I do not know why. Sorry about that. I put several notes, as, and Stephen did as well, in, uh, in YouTube. I don't know why. I asked NP. Uh, he didn't respond. He must not be available today. I am recording this today. So the recording, uh, I'll get with Dan P. later. It may be a while, but the recording should be available on YouTube sometime later. All right, everyone, my time is up. Sorry about the technical difficulties on YouTube. Hopefully we'll be get, able to get the recording posted. All right, everyone, have a great weekend. And I will see you on Monday. Thanks again. Bye.